So in this video, we're going to look at torsion, and we're going to derive a, a simple equation for the torsion on the shaft. So let's look at a shaft, and let's apply a torque. And for every applied torque, there's an equal and opposite uh, reaction torque. So if we had these imaginary lines uh, running along the shaft, when we would apply the torque, these would deform. So we can look at this uh, rectangular area here. When we apply the torque, that will deform. So you can see here that we had a line. It was originally a horizontal line in red. That gets deformed to this line uh, here. So our rectangle uh, was changed from a rectangle to a parallelogram. And it is formed by this angle here, and that angle is uh, gamma. So I've just um, zoomed in on this area here, and that angle here is gamma. So to go from here to here, we would need to apply a force, and that force is a shear force. And when that force is applied over this area, force over here, we get this. Uh, shear stress tau. Now the angle gamma here, we can say that tan of gamma is equal to the opposite over adjacent, so it's how much this is moved in the vertical uh, to the adjacent member here. But when this angle is in radians, <coughs> the tan of a very, and it's very small, the tan of a very small angle is just equal to the, uh, the angle itself. So y over y is equal to Sorry, gamma is equal to y over x. And uh, this will be important in, in a later video. So just to, to reiterate, <coughs> this has deformed due to some shear stress. Okay, there was a force over some area, so the, the area deformed due to some shear stress. <coughs> now when we're looking at uh, torsion, we make the assumption that the radial lines here, here and here, that they remain radial. And therefore, the shear force is proportional to the radius, and consequently for Hooke's law, that the stress is proportional to the radius. So what does that mean? Well, if I look at the end of the shaft, if I have some uh, area here, DA, it would have some shear stress in it, and if we look at the outside of it here, there would be a point here that has a shear stress of tau. And what this um, assumption is that if the stress here is tau, then the stress here will be proportional to that, and it will be r over c. So it'll be the ratio of radius uh, or the distance from the center of this to the radius c. Okay, and we're going to use that now uh, to derive our formula. So if we have a, a small area here, dA, I now know that the stress at that area, of that point, is R over C times tau. But shear stress is force over area, so if I multiply the shear stress by the area, I'll get the force. So R over C times tau multiplied by the area dA, that will give me a force. But what we're really talking about in all of this was a torque. So to get this distortion of the of the shaft, we had to apply a torque. And torque is uh, force times radius. So it's the force times uh, the radius r here. So if I multiplied my force, so this was the force, by r, I will get my, my torque. If I want to get the torque for the entire shaft, then I'll have to uh, integrate where r is equal to naught out to out to c. So I've just rearranged the equation here. So I have tau over c, tau over c. r by r is r squared, and I still have my dA. So that is my torque. But this 
piece of the equation here in blue. That is the definition of the second polar moment of area of the shaft. And this is the resistance that the shaft has to, to being distorted. So I'm going to replace the integral of r squared dA just with j. And that gives me with this equation. So my torque is equal to tau over c times j. That's often expressed as t over j is equal to tau over c. So that's our simple uh, formula, and we will see how that's applied in some later videos.